Hi, I'm Mike German. I'm a fellow with the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU Law School, and today I'm talking with Mary Ellen Callahan. Mary Ellen Callahan is the, uh, I'm sorry, is the chair <laughs> of the Privacy and Information Governance uh, Program at Jenner and Block. That's correct. And from 2009 till August of 2012, served as the Chief Privacy Officer for the Department of Homeland Security. Can you tell me what the role of the Chief Privacy Officer in a, in a security agency is and, and uh, why it's so important to have somebody working on privacy within these agencies? Sure. Um, Homeland Security actually was the first statutorily created privacy officer and it embedded it within the Department of Homeland Security when Homeland Security was stood up in 2002 because there was going to be a lot of information being collected and because they wanted to have some sort of awareness um, of what information was being collected. The position itself is created as a policy position, but I also had supervisory authority over all of the different programs, systems, and privacy impact assessments. Anything I collected personal information from anyone, I had oversight of and had to approve it. So that was great because it provided a systematized oversight. Uh, you have different segments of Homeland Security, uh, TSA, Customs and Border Protection, uh, Intelligence and Analysis, all who look at the things only with their own myopic way. And this way I could look across the issues, making sure we're consistent, making sure we're following privacy protections. With regard to why it's important in the intelligence community in particular, and I think we'll talk about this more uh, later, Mike, but um, the intelligence community by its nature is set up to be very secretive, right? You have to make sure that you protect those state secrets. Um, and you needed to have people, and I had a whole lot of people who had top secret SCI clearance, who understood the issues, who were able to analyze the issues from the analysts perspective, but also look to try to embed privacy protections. Uh, these were your staff? These were my within, staff within those who would work um, in a couple of different ways. Uh, we had um, uh, uh, reports. We would have um, reports on suspicious activities. It wasn't a SAR per, per se, but it was suspicious activities that informed went to all the state and um, fusion centers. Mm -hmm. And in those types of scenarios, we reviewed them all and had to approve them before they went out. Now, we did it in a timely fashion, and we right. turned it around quickly. Um, but I think it was really important to make sure that you don't use inflammatory language or you're precise in what you're talking about the potential threat is. Or furthermore, you're not saying this was a dark-skinned man and therefore I'm concerned. But th there was a, a reasoned basis for the analysis to inform people in the state and local fusion center environment. 